Mr. Covert. Long time getting here, right? Yeah, mm. it's a long journey. Um, Mayor Filer, members of the council, Mr. Phillips, Mr. Epp, members of the uh, staff. My name is Michael Covert. I'm the president and CEO of uh, Palomar Pomerado Health. And I have a few friends who are with me here uh, tonight. <laughs> They're just cheering because they think your speech is going to be short. <laughs> I'll try to respond Good point, in a lot of time. <laughs> Two years ago, we began a journey at PPH to plan for our future and the healthcare future for all the citizens of our region. Approximately a half a million people at this point and growing. A future that would ensure access to and comprehensive services for our entire 850 square mile district and our 1,440 square mile trauma district, one that we could be proud of for the 21st century. We would work to create the highest and most cutting edge level of clinical care backed by the kind of facilities that would stand the test of time, that would mature with the ever expanding growth in numbers and age of our population, that would meet the challenges of a constantly changing medical world, and through our partnership with Children's Hospital, UCSD, and Kaiser Permanente, meet the needs of all who wish to avail themselves of our services, which today represents over 28,000 admissions and some 75,000 visits to our emergency rooms. We'd be able to care for our families, our loved ones, and our friends without ever having to worry about having to leave the area because we would now be bringing world-class level of care here, here to Escondido. And that would allow us to reach out to all seven communities that we serve in a timely, efficient, and effective manner. As our vision and plans have crystallized, and as they continue to take shape with the help of our staff, our physicians, our advisory groups, community leaders, volunteers, and our elected board, six of whom are here tonight, I want to personally thank all of you for being here. So if someone's not said thank you, let me say thank you for coming and being here and a part of us tonight. We are about to enter into an era unprecedented, unprecedented in the history of Escondido and Palomar Pomerado Health. What we are discussing tonight is really our future together. It is not simply about whether you as a council accept or reject a billion dollar business remaining in your community or the maintenance of 2,800 jobs and corporate offices in this city which translates into over $150 million of professional, technical, administrative wages and salaries. And by the way, that has a multiplier effect, and you'll appreciate that, of over a billion dollars a year in this community. Or the annualized purchase of over $100 million in goods and supplies and services and the sales tax that goes with those purchases. Or the building of $600 million worth of new and remodel construction and jobs that go with them or the continued support of our downtown community that is only now beginning to prosper due to the efforts of such groups as our Downtown Business Association, or the development of a technology center that still requires significant financial infrastructure support to make it vibrant. The decision that you will make tonight is more basic than that. It is really about whether or not Escondido wants to be the thriving hub and heart of the northern San Diego region or not. That's what it's about. We wish very much for the positive outcome to be the case, and that we believe, working closely with your staff, that we can make that happen together. And by the way, before I go on and make any further comments, I want to personally acknowledge the leadership of Clay Phillips, and Jeff Epp, and Charlie Grimm, and Pat Thomas, and John Brindle, and Diana Delgadillo. They worked hard, and they worked with us every step of the way. I'm sure that they probably have wondered at times whether we would ever get to this point tonight and could probably show the scars and the black and blue marks as we can from working hard to represent your interests. They clearly understand what is at stake. I personally appreciate the sacrifices that they have made and the risks and the risks that they've taken 
to get these proposals and documents before you. They are worth every penny of their salaries. These individuals have integrity, they have values, ethics, and good business and common sense. And no matter what the outcome, no matter what the outcome of tonight's deliberations bring, I'm very proud to be associated with them and with the staff that work with them, our staff that work with them. You've all done a good job. And over time, I think it will show that my words ring true. So I want to thank all of you, no matter what happens. I believe that as I address these comments in regards to each of the key respective agreements before you, I need to clarify several issues that have been lingering over the past month, just so that we can set the record straight and move beyond them. In regards to the Planning Commission's concerns, I speak to several issues. Obviously, as you know, it was not exactly our finest hour in presentation. Let me assure you that our diligent efforts in working with our neighbor, SDG&E, relative to their concerns regarding the air dispersion and plumes, noise, helicopter flying pattern, and traffic have been addressed extensively in a document, as Mr. Brindle has, comment, has commented on, with all of the additional work has been submitted to you. We will continue to work with them now and in the future. We have been in constant communications with their leadership since they raised concerns as we completed the planning process. I believe that we are confident that the reports and analysis clearly indicate noise is not of concern as evidenced by uh, what you just heard and by the California Energy Commission's recent report, which indicates such, that air dispersion and air quality will have minimal impact even as a result of recent statistical modeling that's been done by the consultants, and that the susceptible receptor issue, meaning concerns for individuals potentially at risk, young and old, is minimal at best. I am sure that you are aware that even your existing specific plan notes very clearly that all groups, including children in a daycare center, can be appropriate users of the ERTC. The fact that PPH must be held to a higher standard, particularly in terms of interior air quality, by the state, in addition to the lengthy efforts undertaken by the SDG&E plant to manage its air quality, gives us comfort that we are not putting individuals in harm's way. Helicopter traffic patterns will be safely established through a no-fly zone to ensure that plume issues, if they exist, are minimized, much as exists today when a helicopter from Mercy Air or other organization has to land in Carlsbad or San Onofre. As an aside, it's interesting to note that many power plants have helicopter landing pads and that such exist at facilities in California and in the United States dealing with air and plumes every day. With respect to traffic patterns and use of PPH by our citizens and caregivers, the projects proposed through the infrastructure changes to be made by the city for improved access to the ERTC can satisfactorily address the potential issues that have been raised. Further, our willingness to provide funding for expansion of Citricata only enhances use of the area. And by the way, let me comment to you that those issues that were of concern, we've resolved with SDG&E. We are good neighbors with each other. The Commission discussed parking needs on the site, and I want to share with you, we will not only meet the requirements the city has established, as Mr. Brindle has outlined, for every kind of building that will be developed on the PPH site, but we intend to go beyond that, which you've determined is your requirements, to include more as noted in our agreement with your staff. That's how you get to the issue that was brought up of two versus the 1.25, because we want to provide more, not less parking. Parking is always a challenge on any healthcare campus, and it's in our best interest to have plenty available to accommodate our patients, our families, our visitors, physicians, staff, vendors. Why wouldn't we want to provide such? Access is key. You know that as well as I. Our comments in regards to the expanded North County Transit District services was to provide even more availability and access to transportation alternatives to and from the site, not less. We thought we were doing and are doing good by working with them besides what we're proposed in terms of parking now and in the future. 
and as you are very much aware, it's anticipated that our infrastructure agreement will participate in the funding of traffic intersections and roadways around the area. We are partners in this together. As we have worked not only with the Escondido Police and Fire Departments, working with Duane and with Vic, but with all the other departments in the district that we serve who desire quick access to our trauma and emergency facilities. As the public lead agency, which we are required by law to be, PPH will work in partnership with you as facilities are developed, much as we are required to do in greater depth by the state and through their necessary approval process. With respect to the seismic issues that were raised, that if we had only spent $7 million back in 1999, all of the needs would have been met. I am disappointed that those individuals who spoke chose to take the dollar amount out of context of the whole report. The fact is that spending $7 million as the sole solution is simply not correct. What they forgot to share with the commissioners is that the $7 million didn't take into consideration all the architectural and design costs or the mechanical, electrical, and plumbing improvements that needed to be made or the movement of our power plant to support the seismic changes or the number of nursing units that needed to be closed in order to accommodate those changes or the accessibility standards that needed to be met or the resultant increases in expansion of the towers that needed to occur because licensure standards have changed and the state requires that we bring them up to code. Further, that if we did, our bed capacity would actually be reduced by a third for a place that's an overcrowded facility already. Or the additional support service changes that would need to take place because of the seismic and piping changes needed to be made in the towers in question. Forget, forget the simple fact of increased costs of construction over the last six years. As you can see, we spent a considerable amount of time looking at these issues, discussing them in depth before we made the decision to move. Now, I know that making the decision to accept us on the ERTC site was difficult for several of you. I know that because you have desires and a vision for your city much as our elected board has for our district, your district. We recognize based on the growth of our communities and need for access to the 15 and 78 and landmass required. That sites were few. As you recall, we asked you what sites were available based on acreage, transportation, and cost requirements. And the ERTC was one of those sites. Well, we could rehash. We could rehash tonight all of the options and the locations and why they were good or bad for any number of reasons. Suffice it to say that I think we're all way past that. But we are very appreciative of your ultimate decision and indication to us a number of months ago that those who were opposed to our obtaining of the site would accept our moving to it based on the fact that it was pad ready, met our geographical and size and cost requirements. We know it was difficult for you. Tonight we have the opportunity to take the next steps forward rather than back. So if I might in the few minutes I have left let me address the specific concerns which have been brought up to us by staff. I believe that through our efforts working up to this evening, we have crafted documents in a positive way that answer those concerns that you have and give you the assurances you need and that our board needs. With respect to the infrastructure development agreement for the ERTC site, we are prepared to provide $13 million to support the city's development of Citricata Parkway. That money will be put into an escrow account while the city completes the CEQA process and design and engineering work. All of the interest off of that account is available for use by the city, hopefully for addressing infrastructure development. Further, we are prepared to commit to the movement of our warehousing and purchasing facilities to Escondido so that the city can benefit from the collection of sales tax revenues on those purchases that will generate an additional $6 million over the next several years and millions thereafter. Added to the $13 million, you will have the $19 million your staff indicated as the total cost you needed to develop Citricata. We would make access available to the account by your staff immediately so that architectural, engineering, and design work could begin without concern as to where the dollars might come from to start the project. 
as the 19 million is amassed, it is only then we would ask you to begin and complete the construction of the roadway over a period of 10 years. In this way, you know that you have the cost covered up front, and we know that the road, which we both agree is important to the community, will be completed. It incentivizes you and us to move the project along. The sooner you get the funding, the sooner you can get the project started. As the mayor has pointed out to us in the past, we have a better opportunity to obtain monies from federal, state, and or local sources from a completion of set Tricata from Valley to the 15 if we do it together. Otherwise, it may be many years before that happens, if ever. I think the solution works for you and will work for us. We have requested that should other funds for infrastructure are made available after the road is finished, and should such revenues generated be more than cost of the project, then the PPH board have the opportunity to receive up to the first five million of such back, recognizing that could be years from now. And when you walk through it, you saw that we also agreed to certain kinds of escalators. If the cost of materials are more, we understand that. We're dealing with that right now, aren't we? So we're trying to respond to your issues. In regards to the memorandum of understanding for the development of the downtown campus, I believe that we've also come up with language and intent that works for both public parties. Let me assure you that should you desire to have us in the community and you do so by your vote yes, we are committed to developing with you our present Palomar site. We have specific needs for use of the space in the future and a desire to continue to serve the needs of the citizens in the area. We have committed to moving our corporate offices back to Escondido, something that has been of interest to you since I arrived three years ago. In order to effectively achieve this sooner rather than later, we will need to build an office building and parking structure to accommodate the increased number of individuals, particularly the approximate 450 to 500 new staff, let me repeat that, new staff, that will be there every day at the end of Grand Avenue from eight to six. Because remember, we still have to operate the place while we have that building there. We do need, and let me make that clear, I understand we need an expanded, thriving downtown community. Since we need to continue to operate our present Palomar Medical Center till the facility is built, we need to purchase property to close a portion of the Valley Boulevard. In our agreements with you, we will begin the initiation of such and within a reasonable period of time, as noted in your exhibits in the Memorandum of Understanding, we'll commit to making fair market offers, value offers, to property owners for parcels needed based on the appraisals made. As a public entity, we are obviously, like you, not allowed to give public funds, so the offers must be reasonable and appropriate. We have also, and let me unders underscore that, have agreed upon language that will allow us to work with the city to acquire needed properties using all appropriate means to do so if such are required. We have incorporated into the memorandum the expansion of key programs and services, including our physical rehabilitation, behavioral medicine, urgent care, infusion and outpatient services, and other programs such as the creation of our Center for Advanced Surgery, Alzheimer's facilities, et cetera. Solely dependent on our ability to move present programs to the new campus and receive state approval to operate the facilities there. At that point, we can truly begin to create the vision we have for the rest of the present campus as mixed use, retail, residential, office, and further health care development. As you are aware, for us to move forward, and as Mr. Brindle has pointed out, we will need to complete a CEQA review that would allow us to finalize our plans. I am excited about our prospects and what they can be in the future, and we've had a long tradition and history together. I hope that in your hearts you feel the same way. On behalf of the citizens of Escondido and the entire district, I ask you to embrace and support our partnership and that we focus on what is really important, what is really important, the health and well-being of the people we both serve. Because I'm going to add live here that 10 years from now, no one will remember this. They're going to remember the facilities that are there that support them. And when you need them, we will be there. The alternative would be disappointing and I believe set this community back for years. On behalf of our board and our medical staff and our employees, I ask for your positive votes tonight on the documents before you. If not, our board unfortunately has to move on. It is easy to vote no or delay, 
and do what is politically expedient for the few. But it takes courage to stand up and vote yes and display the kind of leadership that the larger community you serve looks to and looks for from you. Mr. Haney, our legal counsel, our bazillion consultants and everybody here are happy to answer any questions you have. And I want to thank you in advance for voting yes to support the creation of the hospitals of the future. Thank you.